I'm here with John Wesley Ship. John, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? What do you want to know? Um, what are you currently doing right now? Well, of course, I'm here at Supercon. Steve Wyatt is a good friend of mine, he and his family, and, and so they asked me to come here and uh, meet some fans, and I did this a year ago. And I'm back mostly for The Flash, but some fans from Dawson's Creek and, and different things that I've done, Never Ending Story 2 and stuff like that. So that's why I'm here. That's cool. So um, you want to tell us a little bit about Flash and everything? Well, The Flash was a, was a show that Warner Brothers produced for CBS back in the 90s. And it was the most expensive show Warner Brothers had ever done for television up to that point because we wanted it to be like a, a mini feature like once a week. And to uh, and, and to make it really look good, and uh, and we, we were trying, we were right at the beginning of the new wave of presenting superheroes in a very dark and realistic kind of way. If you did, for example, have the possibility of superhuman speed, what effect would that have on the hu on a human being if it were a real possibility? And uh, we we went uh, one season on CBS, and the uh, cost of the show defeated it. But it has a whole new life on DVD now. The DVD was released um, uh, in 2006, and it's been selling uh, incredibly well and finding new audiences. So it's always fun when, when you've put so much work into something to, to see that, it, that, that its life goes on. So about your costume, anything you want to say about that? Well, this was back in 1990, and they built. They spent $100,000 to build four costumes, uh, Robert Short Productions. The challenge was, since the guy's thing was was speed. We wanted to marry a hyper musculature with something that looked like there was the possibility of movement. In other words, not hard like the Batman, uh, like a sheet of armor, but something that, that moved and also gave, gave the exaggerated effect. So it was basically individually sculpted foam latex pieces uh, glued over a spandex suit and then flocked with a red material and then sprayed with a sealant because I was sweating through it. You know, it was, it was so hot. It was glued down here and uh, and that's basically was the construction of it it wasn't heavy and it did not take a long time to get in and out of but what what the uh, the only problem was heat so they came up with uh, a vest like race car drivers wear that had tubing in it and I put that on first and then in between takes they would plug me up to an ice chest and circulate ice water through the through the vest to sort of jolt me awake you know um, but it, uh, you know, I think it served its purpose. Anybody who's ever worked in a suit of any kind has a hundred horror stories to tell. So I, I could tell, you know, at one point I was dreading it so much that they were like, um, they were like thinking I needed, they were going to get me a psychiatrist because I need, I said, it's not psychological guys, it's physical. <laughs> I'd have this suit on for like half an hour and then you take the glove off and, and the, the empty glove would be full of water up to the wrist. I had elbow surgery, so that's why I've got this on. <laughs> had nothing to do with the, the flash, really. But anyway, yeah, and you just turn the glove upside down and water would pour out. So they, you know, that, that was the hardest thing. That and the glue. And the fact that they couldn't clean them. So they just hang them in my trailer and spray them with Lysol. But you know what? The deal is this. It worked. It served its purpose. It looked cool. I have old fans coming up and telling me that their kids, you know, are, are still digging it. So. You know, it, it, we did our job, and it did its job, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the result. What about the Dawson's Creek show? Dawson's Creek was a, another really special show to have been a part of. It was different from anything that was on TV up until that point. We shot it in Wilmington, North Carolina, a little coastal waterway, and it was, it was fun uh, to, to do that kind of a show that looked and sounded so different, and also to watch those young actors go from... Uh, relative uh, obscurity to uh, to international stardom over the course of those four seasons. So uh, what influenced you to become an actor? I initially started in music uh, at Indiana University in Bloomington. I was an opera theater major and then I switched my major to theater and then I dropped out and moved to New York to continue studying at HB Studios in New York and then with Bill Esper Studios and I worked uh, for a little while with Julie Bavasso down at La Mama and came out uh, to LA and worked with John Sarno and I and I just I was always interested in whether it was music or acting in or whether later on in my acting career if it was soaps or superhero or realistic drama trying to get what is the truth of a moment of the interaction between two people in a given situation and I find that fascinating both from a psychological standpoint 
and, and from an acting standpoint. So I always like sort of digging around uh, in those things. I started first, the beginning of my professional career on daytime was the first big job. No, no, no that's not true. I did the first movie that uh, was ever done on Showtime called The Dirtiest Show in Town by Tom Ian. It was an off-Broadway play. And, uh, and then I went from that to Guiding Light for four years. And, and I won a couple Emmys for daytime and, and did a couple shows on Broadway. I was with Harvey Firestein in Safe Sex at the Lyceum Theater. And I did Dancing at Lunasa later on in the 90s at the Plymouth Theater when the American cast took over. And uh, I, you know, I just, I find it fascinating. I love the work. I, I don't like the business so much, but I love the process of discovering who a character is and why a character does what he does, you know. Uh, I enjoy it very much. Is there anything you're currently working on right now, or? I recently did a film called Karma Police. It was at the Dallas Film Festival. And uh, a film called Grotesque uh, uh, by a very exciting young filmmaker out of Chicago named James Oliva and that is, is making its way to me and that'll make the round of the festivals. And then I did a, a comedy, a sort of goofy comedy uh, named Port City and that is, I understand, in its final edit. It's in post-production. But that should also be making the rounds. Also, this group that I've worked with before out of New York is shooting a film in Georgia this summer that I've been asked to, uh, to play a role and possibly direct. Uh, and so that's probably what I'll be doing this summer. Cool. So, um, is there anything you want to tell the young ar actors and artists out there? The uh, only thing I would know to say is it's all about the work. It's all about the training and it's all about the doing of it. The business is so crazy and it's so insecure that if you don't absolutely love the act itself, then go do something else. I mean, in terms of employment in this industry, you know, the unemployment rates in the acting industry are, are, are astronomical. But if, if you love the process of creating organic moments and entertaining and, and finding the intersection where those two things come together, then there's no greater job in the world. It enriches my own life because I get to study situations and people and characters and, and imagine how I, uh, how I might behave in a set of circumstances that are sometimes very close and sometimes very far from my own life. And I get to flesh that out and fill that out and fight boxing championships and be a superhero or a super dad on Dawson's Creek or, or crazy psycho villains, which both of my uh, Emmys were for. Uh, and it's, it's the greatest job in the world. I, I'm very, very, uh, I'm very, to use an overworked word, but I'm very blessed to uh, have a career as a professional actor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Been nice interviewing you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Chris. And I'm Erica.